Hello, everyone. It's me, Andrew. I'm here in my home in lovely Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Hopefully, you all are having a good start to your week, actually to your year. Happy 2023, everybody. Hopefully, it's a good start so far. Um, yeah, a lot's been going on here. Uh, for me today, um, there was a lot of logistical planning that I had to do. Um, I was trying to finish up a series of paintings. I, I have a couple more that I want to do, so we'll see if I'm done done yet. Um, the, the kind of issue is that we're getting ready for Tucson, and uh, there's not much time left. And I, it's, it's always hard uh, to decide what, uh, what takes priority in your kind of maker lineup. Um, so we'll see if I make the last couple paintings that I want to make. But so I was working on that and I'm getting ready to go down to North Carolina, Greenville, North Carolina for the ECU conference. Uh, it's a material topics symposium. Uh, it's a, a really amazing lineup of different, uh, metalsmiths and jewelers and, uh, it should be a lot of fun. So. We're just kind of ironing out all the details with that, which is a little bit, uh, again, hectic because we're getting ready for Tucson and there's a lot of moving parts involved with that. Um, but yeah, so that was most of today. Uh, and there's a couple other things, but I digress. Let's see who's watching. If you're watching, say hello. Um, it, today is going to be a kind of a short day, um, unless I get into a huge tangent of talk a lot, um, and because I've got a lot of things to do, we might pop on later and do a, a work with, with us kind of video, but we'll see. Um, it's been a long day for me already. Um, and so it might be nice to take a nap. <laughs> I need a nap, y'all. I'm tired. Get some something to eat and take a nap. Um, but yeah, so uh, today's in theory going to be a short one. We've got a lot of stuff that we're working on and hopefully works out. We had an issue with the laser last night. And so that we, uh, William had engraved all these things and it took hours and hours and hours. And then it didn't cut it out. So it's a little bit frustrating because now it's just like it also wasted uh, some of the materials, which was less than ideal. Uh, but I was mentioning uh, getting ready for Tucson. We're going to be at the whole bead show um, at the new Annabelle studio location. So hopefully if you come out to Tucson, you'll visit us, me my, and uh, Azalea and Cynthia. We're going to be there. Um, so we're super excited for that. And uh, Beads of Courage invited us to do a pop-up shop. So in theory, we're going to do a pop-up shop with them. Uh, I, we still have to iron out the details with that. Uh, I know they're busy. They're planning on doing some moving and getting things ready. And it's the holidays and there's a lot of craziness. But in theory, we're doing a pop-up shop with them. So I'm excited for that as well. Uh, I'm going to try to make new stuff for each of the different things we're going to. But who knows what we can, what I can get done in the time before I have to leave. Um, and then another in theory uh, is that uh, SNAG, the Society of North American Goldsmiths, which is a little bit of a misnomer, they have a new show going on in Tucson at the Whistle Stop Depot, um, and uh, we're tentatively uh, going to be uh, showing there. We'll hopefully, knock on wood, we get in. Um, so uh, it will be a, a very exciting adventure. Um now, if you didn't see, we've launched a ton of things lately. So if you didn't see, we launched Beat in the New Year. Today is day three. I believe the challenge for today is make a necklace. If you're interested in seeing the full calendar, you can go to our website, which is allegorygallery.com, 
and go to the blog section and there's a whole blog uh, with links and a downloadable PDF calendar. That sounds like a real thing. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can go and check that out. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, the day one was make earrings. Day two is make a bracelet. And it seems like people are having a good time so far. It's still early. So it, it's like fun and exciting. Um, and but uh, come day 20, people are like, who are doing like the whole thing. They're like, I'm tired. But you never know. Some people do the whole thing. I've done a couple of these challenges before myself. Um, and I always get a lot out of them. And I always am so proud of how much I've accomplished at the end of the challenge. Um, I can't really participate this time. I'd love to do it. Uh, but like I said, we're getting ready for Tucson. So my brain is double stuffed with everything that we need to do for that. Um, and that's a pretty big thing for us. Uh, normally, when we go out to Tucson, uh, we make uh, our money uh, during our holiday sales, and that kind of funds the Tucson trip. And then that funds us through spring. And there's all these little things that, like, you know, you make money for this, and then it goes to this, and it goes to this. And our sales were pretty down this year, unfortunately. Um I think our sales were down 30% in the in-store. Uh, so, so we're having to hustle. And part of that hustle uh, includes, and I always like to do this anyway. I always feel good about it when I make something to um, help uh, offset the expenses of, of, of whatever we're doing. Um, whether I'm buying equipment for the studio or we're going on a trip or I'm going to take a class. I always like to make something um, and, uh, and, and then uh, have that help pay for it. Um, you know, sometimes it, we, we sell out of the things I make and that's awesome. Uh, sometimes we don't, which is not awesome, but, you know, it's understandable. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's nice. I I don't know. I guess I feel, and I know this is like a irrational behavior, but sometimes I feel like I'm a burden when I do things, like especially things that are like just for me and my personal enrichment. Um so I always like to do something to help kind of offset those expenses um, because our money is pretty, uh, 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 goes back into the business. And so if I do something that's not, like this is business related, but like some things that are not directly business related, sometimes I feel a little bit guilty about, which, you know, I know is uh, a, my, a me problem, but um, yeah. I guess we're oversharing today. Um, Mary Ann's watching. Hey, Mary Ann. June's watching. Hey, June. Facebook user is watching. Hey, Facebook user. Helen's watching. Howdy, Helen. Susie's watching. Hey, Susie. I think it's your birthday today, Susie. Isn't it your birthday? If it is your birthday, happy birthday. If it's not your birthday, then never mind. Uh, Marianne says, naps needed should be taken. I need it, yo. I need it. I need it. Um, Diane's watching. Hey, Diane. Suzanne is watching. Hey, Suzanne. Robin's watching. Hey, Robin. And Bonnie's watching. Hey, Bonnie. And is, is it Zo Zochi? William usually talks to you, and uh, you'll have to correct me about the pronunciation of your name, but is it Zoch Zochi? I, th I don't know. But uh, let me know, and then I'll try to do my best. Um, and Amanda's watching. Hey, Amanda. 
And Susie says, yep, today's my birthday. Well, happy birthday, Susie. Hopefully it's a good one. Uh, today in Ligonier, it was really warm. It was in the 60s. And I should have done more outdoor chores, um, but I did not get a chance to do that. Plus, it was kind of rainy, um, which is not always conducive to like burning stuff or raking things and so it, while it was warm, it was not necessarily the best weather to be doing uh, chores, which I would rather take th these kinds of chores than like shoveling snow. Um, and so, yeah, it was nice out. Uh, gray, super gray. And I think that's also why my energy is a little bit off, you know? Um I, I, I think I thrive in an environment that has a lot of sunshine and uh, it's not been too sunny lately. So anyways, uh, Zochi said that that I did okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Amanda says happy birthday. Um, Marion says happy birthday. Bonnie says cold coffee, too lazy to get up and nuke it. I actually drink my coffee that way now, and uh, I've just gotten used to it. I used to like um, really sweet and milky coffee, um, but then it was giving me like other problems. So um, I just drink cold coffee now. And my sister, Cynthia, when she saw me do it, she was all like, what? Who are you? Stranger danger. Um, Robin said, only 56 today in Tempe, so you all beat us again. Yeah, it seems like it's, we've been having a warmish, I don't know, because we had a, 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 a super cold last week, and then this week it's been fairly warm. I wanted to trim the sh uh, hedges because uh, come spring, when the birds start nesting, I don't like to trim uh, when they're nesting because, you know, they're trying to, like, nest, and I don't want to be all going through with a power uh, cutter and accidentally trim their house. Um, so I wanted to get that done. Hopefully I will. Uh, if I don't... You know, that's, that's, uh, oh, well, that's my philosophy now is like, if it doesn't get done, oh, well, oh, well, uh, because there's just so much to do and I am really excited about that because it's been a couple of years since I've gone to Tucson with everything going on in the world and, uh, I'm excited. It's, it's always a good time. I love the desert. Um, we The last time we did a big road trip, me and Cynthia passed through this town called uh, Corazozo. And we stopped for a moment. We thought we were going to get coffee, but then the coffee shop was closed. Um, and it was like the cutest little town. And it was like, there's like a, a time capsule. Um, and it seemed like there are all these like galleries and artists and there's an, uh, we met somebody who did an artist residency out there and she was like, yeah, I loved it, but there's nothing out there. Um, but anyway, so I, we went through there and I was like fantasizing about having, um, a desert home, Georgia O'Keeffe style, where I would have a great big hat and paint in the desert with the wind blowing on my face, which, you know, practically, practicality wise, it's probably not like the best fantasy of getting uh, sand in your eyes, but, um, you know, it seems like romantic. I would say that it would be like going through my hair or whatever, but I don't have any. So uh, lightly fluffing through my eyebrows, maybe, I don't know. Um, more happy birthday wishes. Um, Marianne says coffee should be hot and black. Um, and you know, I, it, it kind of depends on what kind of coffee it is too. Cause, um, there are some coffee, if you drank it black, 
without anything, it'd take the enamel off your teeth. Um, so sometimes like with the, like the Vietnamese coffee, you kind of have to add something to it, but I, uh, I generally don't get that because you can't really get that here. Um, the comments skipped. Um, Bonnie says, 25 today, warm up for us in Minnesota. Um, Facebook user says it was 56 today, but not rain on Long Island. Oh, that's Teresa, I bet. Happy birthday to you, Teresa. I saw that that popped up. I'm not very good about wishing people happy birthday um, in general. And somehow I'm the one that does it in the TGBE group. Um, and I kind of like self-appointed myself where I, I'm probably the person with the least solid grasp on time. And I'm like, how? What? I just need to set a reminder for myself. Um, which we're, we're thinking of doing some stuff come in the new year which is now uh, about uh, uh, sending out birthday cards and things like that for our support network. Uh, we used to do that back in the day and I really loved it. And sometimes when we don't have a ton of orders, um, it would be good to have Barb have something to do so that you know she can uh, still work. Um, she's super sick right now. So our packages uh, have been delayed going out. Uh, William, he's, after he gets done with his job, um, he goes and then packs packages at the cottage. So it's a little bit slower getting things out. Um, and with the holidays too, that's also kind of, uh, you know, slowed things down. But we should be back soon. Barb said that she's feeling a little bit better and they gave her new drugs. And so that should help. Um, Janice says, it was 60 yesterday. Last night we had over an inch of rain in a couple of hours. Now it's in the 30s and windy. Wish Mother Nature would uh, get her act together. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit... That's not ideal. Whenever there is a big shift in weather, my, I, and I, I thought that this was fake. Like I was like, maybe I'm just telling myself this and it's like psyching me up and it, I'm believing my own talk talk. But whenever the weather changes, I usually get like a headache and I look this up and it's like a real thing. And apparently the barometric pressure can change and if you have like sinus pressure depending on uh there's like tissues in your nose and your sinuses and they like inflame and then that causes stress or whatever or restrictions of blood flow and it can cause um headaches so and i thought i was like making it up and then there was a time when i didn't really leave the house very much and it was like, oh, I have a headache. And then it would like start raining. And then William was like, and we kind of took and took notes on it. And that was that. Um, Bonnie says, that's my dream, Georgia O'Keeffe style. Yeah, you know, she had is pretty scandalous. Her and Alfred, Alfred Stieglitz, the Stieglitz circle. Um, so maybe without all the drama, I'd be into it. But they, they had some some wildness, which, you know, actually, like when I think of Georgia O'Keeffe, I think of like this little old lady painting skulls out in the desert. And apparently she's had a, a wild streak. Sanders says, you digressed. I do. I, I have a, I was like, this is going to be a short one. It's, it's not. Um... Bonnie says, I'm getting jitters lately. So decaf for me with almond milk, lactose intolerant. Um, I'm old, TMI. Uh, I think that normal, uh, that happens. 
Susie says, I'm horrible about birthdays. Yeah, I'm pretty terrible. I generally remember like around the area, especially if I know somebody's sign and they fit the sign, you know, then I'm like, oh, and then like, oh, well, it's this time of year. And so generally I can narrow it down. But I had one friend and I just knew her birthday was in August. So in the beginning of August every year, I would send her a happy birthday message. Um, and she's like, you know, my birthday is not for several weeks, right? And I was like, could be today, could be tomorrow. I don't know. At least you got some. Um, Marion says, nice, 13 here. Amanda says, I hope Barb gets well soon. I hope she does too. Um, they gave her, well, I don't, I don't want to talk about her medical stuff, but because it's not my, my kind of stuff to share. But um, yeah, she's been really sick since Christmas. So that's been slowed things down a little bit. Um, but you know, it's not, I, I don't think we are super, super behind. I bet she would disagree. But, um, you know, with all things considering, we're still within the two-week kind of range, which is not perfect. Normally, we get things up sometimes the day of. But, um, you know, with the holidays and everything, I don't really think we're that behind. And she feels so bad about it that I, I, I feel terrible being like, we got to get this thing out. Because then she's like, well, I'm sick, you know. And she's like, well, I could try to, like, wheel myself in and and wear a mask and roll in on a bubble and all this other stuff. And I was like, well, I'm like, or just feel better and we'll try to make do. Um, these, uh, it's her last, it's their last week. So, um and they've been having reduced hours lately. So we're going to miss V when they leave. So that's not ideal. But uh, we wish them well and we're going to miss them. William's definitely going to miss them because he's going to have this new reality of being in the store, like tethered to the store nonstop. Tanner says, it is a real thing. When a hurricane is coming, I know it. Teresa says, I was a Facebook user. For some reason, StreamYard will not show my name no matter how many times I click to show it. It's showing it now. So you must have clicked it the appropriate amount of times to make it happen. Uh, Donna's watching. Hey, Donna. She says, hey, AGB fam. We had nasty weather earlier, like the area I live in was under a tornado warning, but I'm safe and no more bad weather today. Oh, well, we're glad that you're safe and that there's no more bad weather. Marianne says, if it changes quickly, I get headaches. The migraine Chinook connection is real. Um, yeah, we live in southwestern Pennsylvania, and when I moved here, I never really spent a lot of time here. William grew up around here, but I basically drove through here and did shows maybe twice a year or so, but never really spent an extended period of time. And when we first moved here, uh, they would joke and say, uh, if you blink, the weather will change or the weather changes every five minutes or uh, all four seasons in one day. And I thought they were joking, but the longer that I've lived here, we've lived here now for 14 years, I think. Um, maybe 13 years, 14, 15, somewhere around their years. And now I'm like, yep, this not, not exaggeration station. It's true 100%. Um, Janice says, weather change, medical issues is a real thing. I had them since I was young, a young child. My parents had contemplated moving to Arizona to help me since I suffered so much. Now I'm used to it. 
Well, I'm sorry that it was that bad. Um, generally, if I catch it early enough, I can kind of skirt the worst of it. I'm also probably chronically dehydrated, so that does not help also. And I definitely don't get enough sleep. So there's like, there's a meme going around about, they're like, oh, is it this? Or is it this? Or is it this? Or um, is it this? And um, yeah, I play that game often. Marian says it's better on YouTube. Um, Donna says praying Barb feels better soon. Yeah, we're we're rooting for. She said she's feeling better and has new prescriptions, so hopefully, um, she's back soon. Donna says our crazy shift in weather went from like eighteen degrees to the la in the last two days in the high sixties to low seventies. So I've nursed a cold since Christmas, and thank goodness it's gone. Uh, well, I'm glad you're feeling better. But yeah, that's not fun. Um, William read this article, and he said that if your nose uh, gets below like a 15 degree uh, difference, um, then your immune your immunity drops significantly. And so that's why when uh, the pandemic was like the height of the pandemic was happening and people were wearing masks, one of the reasons they weren't getting as sick as much is because their nose was warmer. And I was like, is that real? Or is it like, um, you know, my sister's cousin's friend's nephew posted this article on Facebook and it's from the something something science academy of the internets um and he's like no this is it's a real thing so we'll see um as far as masks in tucson i don't know if i'm gonna uh wear a mask as much maybe if i feel uncomfortable i might um, but I noticed that sometimes when you wear a mask, especially when nobody else is wearing a mask, um, people get kind of weird. And, um, I think when we were at Handmade Arcade, there was maybe 10% of the people who were, were wearing a mask. Um, I was definitely wearing my mask the whole time and, or most of the whole time, not when we were setting up. Uh, cause there was nobody around us directly, but I think that that people thought it was sick. And so they were staying back. So I don't know. Um, I think I'm able to, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get anybody else sick. That's my big thing. Like if I get sick, I don't like it, but I don't want to get anybody else sick. So I don't know. So... I don't know. Maybe I'll be mask free and wild. Um, who knows? Um, Bonnie says a lot of people are getting COVID here now after the holiday. Well, it makes sense. You know, Donna says, and I can believe that. Jenna says, same here. Sandra says, uh, 18 to 60 degrees. That's just crazy. Um, Donna says, Sandra, yes, it is. But that's how the weather is in central Alabama. We might be driving through central Alabama come pretty soon when we're out going out to Tucson. I don't know if we're taking the northern route or the southern route. Um, in theory, if we take the northern route... Um, we might stop in Arkansas and get crystals, dig for crystals. I don't know how much I'm going to be like digging for crystals because I'm not, uh, like a shimmy down a dirt hole kind of person. Um, but, um, you know, there are people who they're like, oh, I did the tough mudder and I got all kinds of dirt and crust in all different kinds of areas. I don't even know. And I'm like, mm, that that sounds not awesome. Um, like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. 
I guess sometimes I could be into it. When we were in the fifth grade, there was this thing called the mud walk, and I was really into it until I saw um, the P word floating around and um, in the water that we were kind of lurching through. And then, you know, that was not my favorite. Anyways, um, Donna says, see, you can pick me up. Maybe, maybe. We'll, we'll bring the minivan, so there there's probably going to be room. I don't know with all our stuff. Zelia's coming. I don't, we're, I don't know how we're going to, like, um, we have a bench seat. Like, most of the seats, okay, so this is probably, you're probably like, what's he talking about? I thought we were going to look at these paintings and he's going to be quiet. Well, guess what? I have this thing where I, once I start talking, even though I say I'm not going to talk a lot, then I start talking and then then you hear about our minivan. Um, so half of the seats in the back fold down and it's really cool. It's like a transformer and it's like, now you see them, now you don't. Um, but we the middle row, which is the row that's directly behind uh, the driver's seat, is a bench seat. So usually we take that out because we're not usually like hauling people around. So, and usually because I like to pick up like wood for stuff and things like that, um, I just, we just leave it in the garage and then we don't have to haul it back and forth. So, so part, uh, we might have to put the bench seat in and keep the other ones folded down so that we can get everything in the back and Azalea is not like in the stretched limousine style where she's like way far back, um, which they do that when they come visit, which is kind of funny. They're like, I got all the leg room. You can like roll around. Um, it might be nice. I don't know if this is actually a, a good idea or a, we probably wouldn't have room, but I was thinking about putting like a cot in the back and then like somebody could take turns resting or something um, while driving and then we won't have to stop necessarily as much. That sounds kind of terrible actually, so maybe not, but um, yeah, usually we stay with people along the way, but we didn't line up for that um, this year. And then one of our friends that we stay with usually in Tucson, she downsized and she moved into this con a small condo so usually she used to have this really big house and um, it was awesome. Uh, but now I don't know what we're gonna do. Um, there were years where we stayed and you never know what you're gonna get because you can spend a lot of money on hotels in Tucson and then end up at the Super 8 that has bed bugs. So um, I'm not gonna worry about it for today because I already, was looking at hotels. Um, I kind of call it the Priceline Boggle because I checked on the app and so the hotel room was $84 a night. Um, and then so I was like, I, I wonder if I could do better. So I looked on Airbnb and I was surprised how much some of the rooms were on Airbnb. I was like, I thought this was supposed to be cheaper. Um, but like somebody was renting out their couch in their living room and it was $75 a night. I was like, do they give you like a back rub or something? But like, I don't know. Anyways, so I looked on the website and then I saw it for 67 But then if you do it through the express deal, then you get it for... Uh, 62 and then I got a discount and so I eventually after like an hour of jingle jangling around trying to configure it I finally got it down to like 50 something a night which is not bad at all but I, it, I was like why can't they just tell you that like right up front like why we got to go through all this like I don't know all this stuff to get to that I don't know uh, Suzanne says, take the Southern route and see me. Maybe we keep talking about every year we talk about stopping in New Orleans. Um, 
And Georgia, I think, I don't think she's going this year because we're in a, in this like private group. And Georgia, I think, said that she wasn't going. But I don't know because she said she wasn't going one year. And then she ended up going and then she was shopping and it creeped up real slow behind her and like reached over for the strand that she was holding. And she whipped around like she's going to punch me in the face. And then I I realized that that was kind of a creep show thing to do. So then I was like, oh, sorry, sorry. It's just me. Don't hit me. Um, but then we just laughed about it. Um, I know we could do like a, like a stop. We're just going to do the world tour. Well, U.S. tour. Um, and the other thing that if we take the northern route uh, along 40, we can stop at the Pearl Museum. And Cynthia and Azalea tried to stop the, when they went last time, but it was closed. Um, so I kind of want to, I think that was during like the height of COVID or whatever. So that, um, so it was closed. So I'll have to research and see if it's open again, because that'd be fun to go see as well, because we drive by it and we're like, we should go, we should go, we should go. And then uh, we never do. We always have a good time uh, with our road trips. Like I try to be pretty efficient when we're driving, um, but I also don't mind detours if we have the time. Um, like one year we were going down for to my parents in Florida for Christmas. Um, and I also had to pick up some tools because uh, one of my friends was downsizing or the one of my friend's mom was downsizing her jewelry studio. And so she was getting rid of a lot of equipment um, and we were outfitting Star Cottage Studio. And so we, I, we went down um, for that. And there was some pretty terrible traffic. It was like backed up. It was Christmas and it was super crazy traffic. And Greg and Cynthia, they got stuck in the traffic and they just like sat there for th however long. I think it was three hours. And then so me and Azalea, I said, how about we go on a, on a, a detour? And so we went to Savannah and had lunch there and walked around and had fun and did a little bit of uh, shopping. We got back on the road. And then the funny thing is, is we got to the house maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes after they did. So it's like sit in traffic and like feel rage or like walk around and have a good time. Um, and we picked the walk around and have a good time. Bunny says, oh, that sounds fun. Do you pick them up? Um, pick them. Oh, Cynthia and Azalea. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so we road trip together because um, we're set up next to each other and we help each other. Uh, Marion says, I've slept in my car. Um, I, you know, I, I don't, if we didn't have all the show stuff, I wouldn't be as opposed to it because our the back of the minivan is actually pretty big. Um, but also there's like three of us and that's a little bit like Filipino style um, where we're like on top of each other. So I don't know about that. Like if it was just me and William, it could be kind of like cute actually, but I don't know about that. Um, Donna says, Marianne, I have two. I just get nervous about stuff like that because I'm brown and gay. And sometimes that, like, if you're, that doesn't always result well for people like me. So, um, I'm a little bit more cautious. Um, Bonnie says, my dad had an old VW van, a blue and white stripe, and he made a bed out of plywood in the back. We drove from Minnesota to California and back in a short amount of time. Yeah, I think that sounds fun. Uh, Michelle's watching. Hey, Michelle. So if you're just tuning in, we're basically just chatting at this point. Um, 
Amanda says, are you allowed to tent camper on the premises? Um, I know some people who do that, um, but I don't think uh, we are allowed. Also, the other thing about that is that that's kind of a long time uh, to be without a shower. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess that you, if you wanted to, I watched this movie called Nomad Land, and um, one of my friends is a nomad, and she lives out of her vehicle most of the time. Um, and it just sounds really hard. Also, Tucson, it gets cold at night um, sometimes. And I don't know about like getting in frostbite and like then being like on it to to sell the next day at a show. I think that would be really hard. So, um, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, I kind of have this fantasy of getting like this like small little camper or RV type situation and like driving around the country in my bead mobile. And I would like set up and it would be like chocolate except with beads, um, like that movie. Um, but I doubt it. All right. So people are not, they're starting to drop off watching. So I'm going to flip the camera around. We've been talking about going out to Tucson. And one of the things that I do before I do a big trip or I get a big purchase of equipment is that I like to make a series of work and um, hopefully offset some of those expenses. So this new um, new series is hopefully going to help uh, pay for some of our Tucson expenses and some of the ECU expenses. Because uh, I thought, I was like, oh, I have, because I sold a, a big painting I don't know when we, when they originally, when they originally did the open call for that. And so I had a little bit of money and we paid for our tickets. Um, but since William, uh, so how this goes about is, uh, or how this is going to be is uh, because Barnaby is still kind of coughing and stuff and V's leaving. Uh, William is going to stay back. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to pick up Lena, so we're going to go. Um, and so I'm bummed that I can't go with William, but I'm excited to spend time with Lena. And we're going to hang out in Greenville, North Carolina, and do stuff. Also, the TGBE weekend is that weekend, and we've arranged it so that I'm not opening the show this time. But I still am going to go on, but I'm going to go on late. And we shifted the hours a little bit later. Um, so that way, um, people on the West Coast in Hawaii don't have to get up so stinking early. We had, like, every GBE people like, I don't watch yours because it's at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning here still. And... Um, I like you, but I don't like you that much to sacrifice my sleep. And I was like, I understand. I get it. Um, and because it's not too bad for us. It's like 11, 10 or 11 that we usually go on. And um, it's not so terrible in California, but it's definitely early. And so um, it's hard for me because we're going to be doing some the symposium so I'm going to do my presentation at the very end of the evening. And I think I'm going on at like 8.15 on Saturday. And hopefully there's good lighting in the hotel because it's going to be real interesting. So we'll see. All right, I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to see the ceiling for a second. I don't know if I should have mentioned that I'm going with Lennis, but I already did, so, oh well. Um, sorry if I wasn't supposed to say that. <laughs> so the well, in my grandma's kitchen, she had these chalkware uh, plaques 
in her kitchen. She had a lemon yellow kitchen and these plaques that were uh, different fruits and vegetables with human faces. Um, and they had the, they were the, I believe my aunt had hand painted them um, in like a class type thing where you go and you do like your paint your own pottery kind of situation. And she must have done them in the 60s, I'm guessing. Uh, and so my grandma had those in the kitchen. And I have very fond memories of spending time in that kitchen. And my grandma, she was like the ultimate crafter. She was always making stuff. She grew up during the Great Depression. Um, and so they were always trying to do little things to save stuff for one. Um, like you never, nothing ever went to waste. And number two, anything that could be like monetized. So she used to do like a yard sale all the time or church bazaar or would do craft shows and um, would make quilts and pickled people and stuffed animals and rock dogs and was always crafting. And I loved it because I love to make stuff. And uh, we didn't have very much money growing up. So we were always doing the same thing where we were kind of, there were the, there was this big red barn in our backyard. And there was this thing called uh, Paco Fun, which is a magazine that's like trash to treasure projects. And so we found a box of those. And so we did all these things. Like we made these, I don't know, stilts, I guess you could call them stilts, uh, out of coffee cans, and we made toys out of, of basically junk, um, and that's kind of my childhood. So, uh, also, in my grandma's kitchen, uh, I, it was kind of the generation where, like, boys don't cook, boys don't do sewing or anything like that, and I always wanted to do that, and so there was a little bit of a stigma about me doing things like that. So my grandma was like my fiercest defender. And she's like, if he wants to do that, then he can do it. And so she kind of st stood up for me. And so uh, I, like, I remember when, uh, when they had the sewing circle, I was definitely not allowed to go to the sewing circle. So one of the things that she did is she went to the church super early and she snuck me in and hid me underneath the quilt. And I don't, you know, I like the other option was to go to the bait and tackle shop. And um, that was fun too, but I kind of got bored because it's just a bunch of like old dudes sitting out in front of there drinking Pepsis and uh, talking about other old people, um, and stuff that didn't really interest me as a child. And so, um, so I want to go to the sewing circle and cause, uh, my cousins and my sisters would be like, Oh, look what we made. Look what we made. And I was like, I want to make that. And they said, you can't go cause you're a boy. And so my grandma, she snuck me in and hid me under the quilt. And so I have a memory of looking up uh, through the, the quilt. And it was just the top layer of the quilt. It wasn't like a double layer. So the light, you could still shine. It was still shining through the patchwork quilt. And um, I remember seeing hands moving up and down. And... Um, you know, I couldn't really see anything to sew myself, but then she gave me a little hoop after and I could practice my stitching and it looked like a hot mess. It looked like a five-year-old made it because I was probably a five-year-old at the time. But anyway, so my grandma was pretty cool and I have a lot of good memories of her and um, spending time with her. And Pigot, Arkansas is where we used to spend our our summers at their house. And it was like it was like a lot of the small towns um, where they had this center and uh, in the in the middle of town. And I have such fond memories of of the, like the Fourth of July parade 
And there was a library that was a couple doors down and I was always at the library and I could tell they were so tired of me. And I was the only like brown kid there too. So that was kind of weird also for them. But um, yeah, so I, I used to have very fond memories of spending time there. And I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of like living in Ligonier, because in some ways it reminds me of Piggott. Um, it, it's definitely different in many ways, but um, it still has that kind of small town charm feel in my memories. And so anyways, so yeah, so that's kind of inspiring with the inspiration behind this new series. Now, some of these are already sold. So uh, if you bought one and you see it, I'm not trying to sell it twice. That sounds like nightmare time. Um, I am just showing it because I'm proud of what I made. All right. Um, so this is the first one and it's an orange. And the next one is a peach. And I don't actually know how much these are, um, but they are on the website that's allegorygallery.com. This is a pomegranate. She didn't have a pomegranate. Um, I actually found a picture of the ones that were kind of like the ones that were in her kitchen. I don't know what ended up happening to them when uh, she passed away. Um, but uh, I guess if I really wanted some, I could get them because people are selling them on like eBay um, or I could make my own, which is kind of like what I'm doing now. Here's a pear. Um, in a lot of my work, uh, in, like my my fine artwork, um, it can be a little bit challenging sometimes. I talk about uh, a lot of social issues. Basically, I use my artwork to as a lens to examine my life and the world around me. And I don't know if y'all notice this, but life can be kind of rough. Um, uh, out there. So sometimes my fine artwork is a little bit hard. It tackles difficult subject matter sometimes. So it's, it's nice to be able to um, switch things up and do something fun and whimsical. I think that that's a little bit underrated some, sometimes. A lot of times people put much more value on like serious artwork. And I know I do for my own work. Um, but I think there's something special about having things that make you smile, you know? So often we don't, we put so much pressure on ourselves. And um, yeah, so this is the pineapple. And here's a lime. Bonnie says, that story you told makes these even more desirable. Um, but yeah, I think there's something special about having something sweet in one's life and uh, something that makes you smile. And I think there, there are some artists who do that, um, that are really good at that. Um, Jeff de Kooning, he has these uh, sculptures that he makes out of their metal, but they're off of like um, balloon art. And so there's like a dog that he has that's super famous. And I feel like that that is kind of one of those ones that's super sweet. Um, if you Google him, you might be a little bit horrified because he went through a phase where he's going to that he's going to show all his privates and his wife's privates. And um, so uh, if you Google him, Jeff Coons, you may get surprised. So not all of his artwork is all cute dogs and, and stuffed animal creatures. So just, just keep that in mind. 
Uh, if you Google it and you see something, don't be like, Andrew made me look at his, his private parts because I did not do that and I warned you about that. So just keep that in mind. But there are other artists who kind of play with that kind of sweetness as well. Um, and another artist is like Mark Ryden. And some of his work is has kind of darker elements to it, but there's like a sweetness to it also. Um, and then there's, um, uh, oh my, I just went out of my mind. A Japanese artist, um, his last name, uh, uh, his first name starts with a T, there's an A, there's a K, um, and there's his last name starts with an N, and there's an A and an R. Anyways, it goes away. Sometimes that happens. Um, and so his work is also super sweet um, and has like big eyed creatures. Um, and so I don't know, I think it's nice. Um, one of the artists I follow on Instagram is named Mab Graves, and she also has that kind of whimsical sensibility. And my sisters, both my sisters have very whimsical sensibilities about their artwork as well. And I think it's nice, you know? So here's a mango. This one's a little bit weird because I did a profile and someone's like, it looks like it could like, its jaw could expand and it would bite me. And I was like, you never know, maybe it could. And then there's this apple. And these ones are all um, available on the website. So if you are interested in any of the ones that I just showed, those ones are all available um, if they didn't already sell. If they already sell, sold, they're, they're not. But um, a bunch of them are still available. Now, these ones I finished last today sometime, last night and today. And so these are not on the website yet. Um, William has to do that. And he's at his other job today, so he hasn't had a chance to do that yet. But I did this grape. This was actually harder than I thought it would be. Um, and some of these, I had this idea that I would use the gel press and make these simple sil silhouettes um, and do kind of like Eric Carl style. You know that Hungry Caterpillar? Do you all know that children's book? So um, so I thought I was gonna make some stuff like that where I use the gel press to make the backgrounds and then cut them out. Um, and I did do that to form the underlayers and some of the, like the leaves and stuff are more kind of in that, in that rougher state. Uh, but then the faces and stuff, I started noodling around on them and I just kept going and going and going. Uh, so they are much more painted than, uh, than originally I thought they would be. Like originally I thought I was like gonna cut out shapes and keep it simple. And uh, I did not do that. And then this one, this is a, a very shocked kiwi. It saw its friend get chopped in half. And it's like, oh no. And then here's a strawberry. This is another one that I just finished. These one, these last ones are not on the online store yet, uh, but they will be soon. I hope that I can do a print or something like that, but I don't know. And then there's a banana. Basically, I made a cornucopia or uh, fruit salad. And I had to think of fruits that were kind of recognizable. You know, there's some fruit that just looks like a green blob. And you're like, what is that? And then you're like, that is a guava. And <laughs> I guess guavas are more... If you cut them, they're more you can you can definitely tell. Um, but like from just from a, like a silhouette and color 
perspective it doesn't look like too much unlike a pawpaw like i'd be like you know that's pretty obscure i did do like some weirdo fruits like this dragon fruit you don't really that's not one that you see especially around here very often and then the last of the new ones are these cherries and i thought this was just so sweet but um i have probably six more that i started but i don't know if i'm going to be able to finish them before i have to get cracking working on stuff for tucson so anyways these are the newest paintings that i made the first things that i made in 2023 what are some things that you made in 2023? Did you make anything yet? I always try to make at least one thing a day. Um, but sometimes if I work on a series, it takes a little bit longer for that to actually gel completely. Because I'll work on stuff a little bit at a time. So it's like day three of the new year. And it looked like I didn't do anything on day one or day two. but um, there you go. Um, Marianne says, a little whimsy is fun, although art that makes me think is also good too. Yeah, I like both. And I like it when you can do, when you can sometimes do both. Um, for a while, I was contemplating having a separate uh art account for my more serious artwork as opposed to my more fun artwork. And I did start an, a separate account that's more personal, but then I never post to it. And I was kind of getting paralyzed to post to the business one uh, because I was like, oh, should I put this on the business one or should I put this one on the personal one? Should I put this on this? And so I wasn't posting to either of them. So that's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of dumb. So I don't know. Uh, I need to get over myself and just post whatever. Because I kind of, I was on a roll for a while, kind of posting every day and sharing kind of like little snippets of, of my creative life. And um, now I'm just like back to my hermit space. Diane says, I love the apple. Thanks. Diane says, they are really cute. Thank you. Uh, Diane says, guava turnovers are delicious. Yeah, I like it. I appreciate a guava. Um, I like um, guava paste. Um, or quince paste is really good, too. Or guava and quince paste. Um which I tried to make the other day and it did not gel up. So it kind of, I basically made jam. Um, Amanda says, those are amazing paintings. Thank you. Cynthia says, I love these so much. Thank you, Cynthia. Donna says, yes, I've been using the design challenge calendar for that. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm really proud of everybody who's been posting. Um, I've tried to keep up with comments, but I kind of got distracted the last couple of days. Um, but I try, I generally try to comment on everybody's uh, stuff to keep the energy up. And I encourage you to comment on other people's things as well if you have the time and feel the mood to do it. Um, because it's so nice when you kind of build community through it. Um, Fusion Beads used to do a creative challenge in the month of March um, a long time ago. And I think this is before we even had the store they were doing this. Um, and, and they're no longer around. Um, but anyways, they um, I became friends with some of the other challenge people. And, you know, it was nice. But anyways... Um, Bonnie says, I think the Kiwi is my favorite. I think it's, it's definitely one of the ones that has, it's the least like the other ones. Like all the other ones are kind of like these sweet faces. And then, or like, ooh, um, 
or like little kissy faces. And then this one is like, oh my. And it's like shocked. Diane says, so far I have only made my beat in the new year projects. Oh, good. I still need to do a necklace today. Well, you still have time. Uh, Marianne says, quince and cranberries is good too. Yeah. It also, I realized the quince and the cranberries uh, help solidify stuff, you know, like cranberry sauce that, that if you cook it down enough, it becomes like a jelly. Um, and we used to get that. There used to be this little cafe around the corner from where I used to live called Moto. And it was a horseshoe bar. So the building was kind of shaped like the flat iron building, which is kind of like wedge shaped. And you would go in and there was a great big horseshoe bar. And one of the things that they used to sell was um, um, the the membrio. I think I'm saying that right. Membrio. It's like a paste. And then you have um, a manchego cheese and a good uh, crostini. That was hit the spot. And they also had this warm date cake and a toffee cake. hot, to um, And it was good. I miss that sometimes. Mostly when I think of New York, the things I miss is like the food. Um, I don't necessarily miss how expensive it was to live there. Um, Zochi says, Quince paste is delicious. The paintings are very cute. Thank you. Donna says, the paintings are really cute. Thanks. Uh, Suzanne says, I like the grapes. Thanks. Bunny says, that's why I like it. Oh, my. Helen says, I love the paintings. Lemon, especially. This one was the first one I painted. And um, I was like, oh, I'm going to make these cute little quick paintings. And then I was like noodling around on the faces. And I think Cynthia has this the same compulsion also of wanting to keep going, adding more and more and more. Um, and sometimes that's good. And sometimes that is uh, you lose that spontaneity. Um, maybe not in her work as much as mine. Uh, at least I, I think so in my work. I sometimes lose that spontaneity. And I'm like, if only I had a time machine, but then I'd probably noodle around some more just in a different way. So I can't doctor who my way out of that one. Uh, Marion says, that's right. Brian says, New York Italian is my fave. Amanda uh, says, you are really good at painting eyes. Thanks. I think I'm okay. I could always practice. That's like anything. Uh, Marion says, still partial to the peach. I think I did a good job. It's like a southern peach. A little bit sultry. All right. So I'm done showing you paintings. I was going to try to do a project today, but I feel super tired. And um, I have a lot of work that I still need to do. And I would love to take a nap before William gets home. Um, so we might tune in later tonight and do a work with us video. I don't know if he's up to it or not. Um, also, I don't know if he's going to be doing like shipping, but I don't know if people want to see that. It's like, like, that's like the most boring work with us. It'd be like, watch me while I do taxes. Um, which actually would have probably been useful if I did that when I was younger. I actually learned how to do my taxes better. That would have been super useful. I had some really wonka doodle classes in college that um, were interesting, but wildly uh, like not very useful. Um, which I don't think everything has to be useful. I'm in the camp that whatever uh, makes your mind grow and your kind of horizons expands is a good thing, as opposed to being so uh, practically oriented. 
like I get it, but like especially like like you know I don't know I just think that a lot of of this stuff is kind of we're molding people into like doing jobs and that's their entire lives and they don't really have a chance to ask themselves if that's what they want to do. Um, and like people who are like 14, 15, 16, they're being forced to like decide what they want to do for the rest of their lives. And then they, they do that. So I don't know, for me, I kind of just think that education is one of those things that as long as you're kind of expanding your mind, um, in some way, you know, it's of use and benefit overall. But anyways, that's another topic for another day. Bunny says, I have friends with retro kitchens that would love them all. Well, tell them so I have more money to spend in Tucson. Um, Marion says, go have a nap first. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to start dinner, I think. Um... I, we made black eyed peas for um, New Year's, but we used the instant pot to make them, and they turned out a little bit different. And they were like dark, like it was weird because usually, like when you have like black eyed peas, there's like that kind of creamy, fleshy part, and then like the black eyed pea part, and they turned like all black eyed pea part, like they're all black. They weren't burnt, and so I don't know if it's because they got like saturated funky i don't know they tasted fine but it was different but anyways i have another bag of um black eyed peas and i was kind of in the mood for them and then whatever we have for leftovers i saw this recipe for uh black eyed pea patties um and they looked really good i made them before a long time ago and really enjoyed them so, um, I was thinking maybe I would do that tonight, but that's kind of an involved project. We have to like roll stuff out and fry things and bake things. And I was like, um, so this is kind of a set it and forget it. And then I wake up and then the food's done. Um, Amanda says anything is better than taxes. You know, I don't actually mind taxes. I don't enjoy it necessarily but i do uh, having like the small business it's kind of almost like having a report card um and i used to like getting a report card i know some people never like getting a report card but i like getting a report card so to me it's kind of fascinating and i like progress reports because then i can like decide like what i need to do uh to get a better grade kind of thing and so, um, so I don't know. I don't necessarily mind them. I don't like doing them necessarily, especially when I want to do something else. But it would have been, I think it would be, have been super useful, at least on the collegiate level, to have a business. Like I took a business for artist class um, and they basically told us about how like to document your work and then hire people who can keep track of stuff. And I was like, is this like the whole class? Are we gonna actually like go into like specifics of how you do different things? And then they were like, uh, that's not that's not what we're gonna do. So um, it was interesting and I thought it, they raised a lot of good points, but I was like, this is, I don't know about this. Um, this is not what I thought it was gonna be. Um, but anyways. Um, Marion says, working for a single employer, taxes are simple, not like business taxes. Yeah, when I used to work in New York in the restaurant industry, well, it was kind of tricky because I got tips sometimes. But when I moved up into management, it was so easy. You just hand it, you know, you got your little slip of paper and then you, um, there was, there's somebody who, who used to file our, the taxes for my family i would just send her this slip of paper and she was like did you make any other money i was like nope and, and then she's like okay great and that was like done um but now we have to it's it's not like that <laughs> it's not like that at all um and it's kind of i don't know i 
it's one of those things where we like keep track of all of the receipts and William has spreadsheets and he does he's the one who does most of it so I'm talking about how fun and exciting it is and he's like yeah I have a lot of anxiety about taxes all the time every day um and he does not think they are fun but anyways bunny so they think I just did if they follow what I'm watching oh good um bonnie says i have never had black eyed peas well i like them and uh you if you if you like i don't know not everybody likes them though because i was like oh but whenever i have them on new year's i was to tell myself i'm like oh i should eat these more often and then that's like my new year's resolution is to eat more black eyed peas like every single year even though i don't have a resolution um, and generally, I don't have a resolution because I think sometimes it's, it can set yourself up to for failure, which apparently I have failed eating black eyed peas every uh, year more regularly. Um, I only do it on the holiday. So anyways, I like them. You may you may like them, too. Um, when we weren't vegetarians, I like them more because you could put like a ham hock in it. And you get a lot of flavor that way. Nowadays, we have to like come up with different ways to add flavor. And they're good, but they're not as, as good as they were with the meat flavor. But anyways. Um, Bonnie says, is it a Southern food? What do they taste like? Um, they taste like, yeah, it is a Southern thing. They The recipe is called Hoppin' John's. Um, and you can like dress it up or dress it down, but they're, they're not like regular peas. They're, it's like a, a, in between, between a pea and a bean, if that makes any sense. And then in theory, they're kind of soft and pillowy also. So, um, so there's that. So I don't know how to describe that. Besides that, all right. Oh, there's Lennis. Um, Lennis says, liking them is not the point. It's superstition, LOL. We eat them every New Year's Day. Yeah, I I had, um, I do, I like them though. So, and I always say, oh, I should eat these not just on New Year's Day or New Year's. And then I never do, but Maybe now, I, I we, William bought a lot, so I was like, "How many things? Who? Who? We also were gonna have a party, so that got canceled, and so I was like, I don't need to make all these then." Um, but so we had one party one New Year's where it was all lucky foods from around the world. So we had um, black eyed peas and collard greens, and um, there were those grapes. Um, in Spain, you get these frozen grapes on a stick and you have to eat them all in a row at the strike of midnight. And I had a lentil dish and it was dal, which is D-A-A-L. Um, and I can't remember what all we had, but we had some pretty good food. And um, it was a fun party. We used to have more theme parties, but nowadays we we don't do that as much but anyways helen says smoked paprika yeah i used um helen when she came and visited she gave me some spices from penzies and i used some of those and they that made them really good i think i used a mural of flavors one and it has kind of a citrusy kind of base to it. So it was pretty, it was different uh, than normal, but it was really good. Bonnie says, how fun. I like the idea of the frozen grapes. Diane says, I was going to bring my New Year's pretzel from Oakmont Bakery to the party if Chris and I came over, but then it got canceled. Well, you could have come over to our house, knocked on the door, and we could have, I like Oakmont Bakery. 
Um, but no, it was probably for the best because we, uh, it ended up being kind of stressful. Um, there was some hubbub about, I'm not going to get into it. I was going to get into it, y'all, because I was tired and I was just going to let it slip out. And then I was like, nah, I'm not going to talk about it. So anyways, I made these paintings. If you like them, you should buy them so that I can go to Tucson and have money to spend. And uh, that would be great. All right. Hopefully you all have a great night. I'm just going to go. I'm not going to turn the camera around because it's kind of a pain in the butt. And you already know what I look like. So see ya.